Hey everybody, welcome to our module that is focused on supporting you in documenting your ideas, citing correctly, and using RefWorks to make sure to keep track of all the research you're doing. So, um, this little video is really meant to give you just some basic guidance, some basic uh, exposure to what most authors tend to do or how most authors tend to document their ideas when they use APA style. Right, And I'm saying documenting your ideas rather than just citing because documenting is a lot broader and really emphasizes the fact that as academic writers we have to show our readers where our ideas are coming from, where we're taking this particular theory, this particular statistic, this particular summary of a complex issue, where is it coming from? In essence, this will allow our readers to see how our thinking, how scholarly thinking has evolved over time, and it shows them in our writing kind of our intellectual history. So let's look at some examples together on how to document your ideas. And there's basically three ways that in-text citations, which is really the core of documenting your ideas for the bulk of your paper, um, there's three basic types of those. The first one, example A, is where um, the study or the article is referenced just by its name. So based on a recent study, or you could also say based on a recent review article, depending on the genre. And the author and the year are in parentheses. So based on a recent study, example A here, Smith 2016, eating chocolate before an exam boosts academic performance among high school students. By the way, this study is made up, so don't try to look for it. It's just an example I'm using. Example B does something similar, but in example B, the author's name is actually used in the actual sentence that you know, I'm writing here. So in a recent study, comma, Smith, parentheses 2016, argues that eating and so on and so on. This is often used by writers when they want to emphasize a particular author by name, either somebody who's really famous in the field, somebody who might be very controversial, maybe a name that's not related to the field at all but has something meaningful to say to this conversation around a particular topic. Um, it's, an, it's an emphasis, um, not necessarily all the time, but it can certainly be read that way. Um, and that's one strategy if you really want to emphasize the author author, you can pull him or her into the actual sentence you're writing. An example C um, is just the focus is completely on the finding, on the fact or the idea that you're getting from the article. So it just reads, among many other benefits, eating chocolate before an exam boosts academic performance among high school students. Parentheses at the end, Smith 2016, telling me this particular finding or fact comes from an article by Smith. Example C could probably be in, an, in a paragraph where um, many other many benefits of choc eating chocolate are discussed. So among others, there's this one. The next sentence might cite a study by somebody else on another benefit, right? So it's a different strategy of dealing with the information in the particular source by um, using the citation just at the end, where the emphasis is really more on um, the content than necessarily who has written it like the other two might emphasize it a little bit more or give the reader an introduction. So often I find example A and B style sentences in uh, in papers where the writer really goes into detail into a particular study, right? These sentences could be the first sentences about a particular study, the study by Smith, whereas example C just lists the study or finding of the study as one of many examples within one paragraph. So let me show you an example of um, a paragraph Graph that you know example A and example B might be found in more likely. And this is this particular paragraph here. So if you want to pause right here for a couple of for a minute or so to read through it, please do. If you paused or not, if you just want to read through it quickly, um, I want to point out to you, you see there is a one source is cited here as a source by two authors, Johnson and Urban, 2013. Both cases, the authors are actually part of the sentence rather than just being put in the parentheses. And I want to point out here to you that the, the writer of this paragraph cites them twice. What I often see is that students might cite 
the source day you're documenting, what they're documenting here. They're citing it after the second sentence or so, and then they're writing three, four more sentences about the study, but never cite it again. You don't have to necessarily cite it after each sentence, particularly if you're just talking about Johnson and Urban in this paragraph. But what you want to be careful about is if you if you cite them in the second or third sentence and then have several more sentences afterwards, you want to think about adding a citation towards the end of that paragraph of that source and it indicates to your reader that, hey, I'm taking all of this stuff here from Johnson and Urban. Of course, in my own words, I'm paraphrasing, I'm really making this my own by putting it in my own words, but here this is where it's coming from. Right? That's the example for, again, thinking back of example A and B in the previous slide, those are the, that's the kind of paragraph that those are usually used most often. So, um, just a quick note um, about page numbers for citations. In APA, you're only required to use page numbers when you're actually quoting something verbatim or the exact same wording, you're using the exact same phrasing and wording from the original, you put it in quotation marks, and you add a page number. So, the example here is Smith 2016 speculates that quote, whatever the quotation is, end quote, and then in parentheses you put the page number. Um, so page 25 or wherever that comes from, again, fictitious article. Um, if, you're, if you don't have Smith 2016 at the beginning, if you just say something, you know, there's a speculation that is, you know, quote, then you would put in the parentheses at the end, Smith, comma, 2016, comma, page 25. But the page number, again, is critical. That's my main point here. The page number is critical when you have a direct quotation. So again, don't have to worry about this for this paper in this class because we really don't want you to use direct quotations as a practice. I know it seems like a punishment, but it's we're really encouraging you to find your own voice. And we're really more interested in reading what you have to say than Smith or whoever else has to say. So let's look at the last slide together here. Um, on documenting our sources. And that's an example of a paragraph I've taken out of a research article in, God, I forgot what uh, what journal it was from, but it was a peer-reviewed journal. So you'll see if you, and again, if you want to pause here for a moment to read over this, please do so. If you haven't, or if you just want to continue, that's fine. Um, want to point out to you here, if you just glance through it, you see a lot of parenthetical citations, um, sometimes even within a sentence. This is very typical for an extensive literature review for a research article, where a lot of information from a lot of different sources get crammed into one paragraph, because they all have to do with a similar idea. In this case, it has to do with particular perspectives on issues linking education to specific identity issues or domains, and then different examples and more information. Um, also notice in some of the parenthetical citations here, they start off with EG, which means example given. That usually means that or the author with the writer here indicates that, hey, these are examples of sources or of articles or research that addresses this issue, but there's actually more. Right, the EG just means examples given. These are a sample of some of the works that fall into that address this particular issue. And one last thing about um, citation in-text citations: whatever you're citing in text needs to appear on your reference page. Whatever's on your reference page needs to appear as an in-text citation somewhere in your paper. So don't have things on your reference page that you're not citing in text. That is a big no-no in APA. As always, send me an email at imay at umaryland.edu or at the writing center at umaryland.edu um, and let me know if you have any questions. Bye.